So real quick, I'm not sure. Thanks for coming out, like always. Um, I don't know if I've covered the Michigan State. Did I give to Michigan State? You did not publish that. Okay, so Michigan uh, State players at a game, just so you guys have them. Uh, on offense was Pat Fryermuth. On defense was Lamont Wade. And then on special teams, we actually had three. Uh, Blake Gilligan, uh, Dan Chasina, and Andrew Hartlob. I think Andrew Hartlob and, and Dan Chasina have been fantastic all year long, really embracing their role, um, our ability to pin people deep through Blake's punts and those guys covering down um, has been has been excellent. So I want to make sure we give those guys some love because they've been great. Um, you know, kind of getting into Minnesota, what I, what I always try to do with all these opponents early on is I just try to kind of look at our history with them. And uh, one of the things that was interesting is, you know, our series with Minnesota is, is nine to five. Um, so not, not a very long series and not very lopsided in either direction. Um, we're only on a one game win streak against these guys. Um, I've gotten to know PJ, you know, pretty well over the years. Um, he's obviously done a great job. You look at what he was able to do at Western Michigan, you look at what he's been able to do now at Minnesota, um, it's, it's hard to not be impressed with, with what he's been able to do. Obviously, you know, they were returning 17 starters this year, so I had a lot of confidence coming into the season. Uh, based on that, um, you look at offensively, and, and Kirk Scirocco, who's a, who's a PA native from Lewisbury, went to Redland High School. I've known Kirk for a long time. Um, has done a really good job. You know, done a really good job. You look at them offensively, it's probably the best offensive line that we have played. Uh, they are massive, I mean massive. The right tackle, 6'9", 400 pounds and not skinny, if that's, if that's uh, excuse me, and not, and not heavy, um, if that's even possible to, to say. Um, the guy next to him, I think is 6'5", 350. They have the biggest offensive line, I think, in the country, uh, college, including the NFL. Uh, best wide receiver group we've played. They're going to play a mix of 10 personnel, 11 personnel, 12 personnel, and then we'll get into some heavy packages with an extra lineman in there as well. Um, guys that we've been impressed with, the quarterback is very efficient. He's very, um, um, he's very accurate. He manages the offense really well. Um, they got a lot of confidence in him. He's playing at a high level right now. Rodney Smith, the running back, you know, typically you say it seems like this guy has been playing there forever. He has. He's been there for six years um, and, and really doing a good job for them. And then uh, wide receivers, uh, Tyler Johnson as well as Rashad Bateman, um, really can name all their wide receivers. They're, they're playing extremely, extremely well. Defense, another Pennsylvania guy. I try to track all the Pennsylvania guys uh, across the country. Um, that's something I'm, I always try to be aware of. Um, but Coach Rossi's done a great job. He's now, I think, in his going into his second year, really a year and a half, because I think he took over at the, at the mid point of last year. He's from Pittsburgh, went to Pittsburgh Central Catholic, which is where Coach Limegrover went to high school as well. Um, they're a base front, four down defense. They're going to play variations of two high uh, quarters and, and quarter, quarter, half. They'll mix some, some cover one in there as well. They play extremely hard on defense. I have a huge man crush on Antoine Winfield. Um, I think he's playing at a really high level. Their safety, uh, five interceptions, runs the alley, is physical, uh, just playing really good football right now. Their linebacker, linebacker Kamal Martin, is playing extremely well. And then Carter Coughlin, who's a legacy there, um, playing really good at defense and does a lot of different things for them, runs extremely well. Uh, and then their special teams coordinator and Rob Wenger, um, you know, they do a nice job, play really good complimentary football, offense, defense, and the special teams. They have one returning starter, their punter, and then uh, Rodney Smith's doing a great job as a return man, and then they have a graduate transfer DB transfer from Michigan, um, a Canadian kid, uh, Benjamin St. Just, if I'm saying his name correctly, excuse me if I'm not, I apologize. 
Uh, their DB number 25 is a gunner on the punt team and, and is a problem, has been, has been very effective. You know, I look at them as the program started out in the year um, with some games against the Jackrabbits and against the boys from Fresno and, and found ways to get wins. Um, you know, and as the year has got on, like good programs do and like good coaches do, they just got better. You know, they just, they just keep getting better. You know, they know how to win. Um, you know, they play probably um, a style of football that you don't see much anymore. Um, he wants to dominate time of possession uh, with their offensive line. Um, literally, if they, get, if they get up by a lead early in the game, they're going to start milking the clock already. They're going to try to suffocate you um, with their offensive line, with their style of offense, and with time of possession. Um, they've been unbelievable on first down. You look at their numbers on third down, their numbers on third down are great because their numbers on first down are great. You know, they, they have very little negative yardage plays, tackles for loss, sacks, things like that. They stay on schedule and just very efficient. Defense, they're able to get a bunch of turnovers. Um, and special teams, they do a great job of, of complementing the offense and the defense. Obviously, it's going to be, um, you know, uh, on the road against the 13th ranked team in the country. Um, at 12 o'clock, it's going to come at us fast. Um, so, you know, looking forward to the opportunity, and uh, got a lot of respect for for Minnesota, their football program, their coaches, and what they've done so far this year. So, open up the questions. Rich Scarzella, Red Eagle. James, how are you? Hey, Rich, how are you, buddy? <coughs> Can't could be better. James, I like that. what is the team's primary focus during the bye week? Did you accomplish what you wanted? And did it come at a good time for you? Yeah, I think I think the first thing is, is rest and recovery. Um, you know, I think the older I've gotten, I've gotten a little bit better at that. My answer for everything is more. Um, and that's that's not always the right answer. So during the bye week, the rest and recovery probably was important as everything. Our normal Monday off, um, our normal Sunday practice before that, and Tuesday and Wednesday, you know, we were able to get some good on good work and then really spend some time on the individual because as the season goes on, sometimes you have to cut a little bit of the individual work back to make sure you get all the game plan specific reps done to get your guys prepared for what they're going to see. So being able to amp up the individual work, get plenty of individual work, and then the good on good work against each other and some of the young guys scrimmages, which, which was great. Um, then the, the, the travel squad guys were able to have off Thursday, excuse me, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, the the non-travel squad guys were able to have a practice on Thursday, which was which was great. Something that we've done now uh, for a while. It allows those guys to get a little bit of extra work. It allows them to get a little bit of extra attention. It allows the GAs to really coach. Um, so that was great. And then you know we got back in here on Sunday and, and got back to work again. So rest and recovery was probably the biggest thing. And then from a coaching staff perspective, we were able to go back and, and study some of our tendencies, self-scout ourselves. And we did a little bit of self-scouting across the ball. Um, so allow our offensive guys to look at our defense and vice versa. Same thing with special teams, some value in that. And then, um, and then be, able to be able to get on the road and recruiting uh, to make sure that we continue building you know, for our future. So uh, I thought we had a really, really good bye week, got a lot done. Uh, got a lot done here in Happy Valley, got a lot done all over the country uh, from one coast to the other. And, um, and then we're able to get back here this week. So I thought we had a really good bye week, but, but obviously we got to have a great week of preparation this week so we can go play well Saturday. Derek Lavar, Sports Bay Times Leader. Hi, uh, James, how are you? Good, Derek, how are you? Good. James, how do you uh, evaluate the play of your, uh, your younger quarterbacks this season, uh, especially the freshman who had to step in? And uh, with uh, Donovan Johnson, is that a situation where he might be able to return this season? Yeah, so been been very pleased with, with our young corners. We've had, we've had some bumps and bruises there where we've had to go deep you know, in our depth there. And I think those guys have done well. You know, Marquise is the guy that we're talking about redshirting and, um, early on, and, and then he just has continued to get better and better and better and build confidence and build trust with the coaches. So 
he's a guy that's playing and, and playing well for us right now. Keaton Ellis has been playing you know, from the beginning of the year. We've used uh, Joey Porter a little bit too. Um, so feel really good about those guys. You know, Trenton is another guy that's um, obviously you know coming off a red shirt has, has, has done some really good things for us as well. And then you know the two old guys are leading leading the pack and leading the charge. So I think I think all those things have, have been great. Um, we're going to continue to do it. I think you know as the season has gone on, the coaches have gained more and more confidence in those guys. I think those guys have gained more and more confidence in themselves. And we're going to need them. You know, we're going to need them down the stretch, and especially this week. You know, we're probably playing probably the most talented wide receiver group that we faced this year. All right, we'll go to challenge. I'm going to call. Hi, man. Hey, Mark. How are you? Good, man. How are you? Good. Just thought I'd take my shot. What's your sense um, regarding John Reed and Noah Kane's availability Saturday? So, John Reed and Noah Kane's availability Saturday. Yeah, we're, we're expecting them to go. Frank Bodani, you're through the record. Hey, good afternoon, Steve. Good afternoon. Yes. Um, I know a couple times already this year you mentioned how good your locker room is. You're in a good place right now. That's something obviously we don't see a whole lot of. Can you just talk a little bit more about why you would say that, the value of that? That's been hard to develop at all. Yeah, I think I think it's the leadership. We don't have a huge uh, senior class, but I think the leadership's been really strong. Um, you know, I think. You look at the leadership council. You look at the captains. You know, those guys. Those guys have been really good. You know what? You know the term I use all the time is culture drivers. You know, I think. I think there's a there's alignment between the, the coaches and the players. Um, I think you know we, we made some changes in the off season. Um, nothing dramatic. Just some some subtle changes. You know one of the mistakes that I made a year ago is when the NCAA cut back the amount of practices that we could have during camp. They cut out five practices, I think is, is what the number was. Um, and that gave me some, some anxiety. So typically we schedule some uh, you know, surprise off days in there and things like that. I didn't do it, losing five practices. And um, I think it affected you know, morale and, and, and a lot of different things. So little subtle things like that can go a long way. So, we plan for those things, and, and um, I just I just think there's there's been really good discussion in both directions. Um, there's been really good leadership. I think we got some older guys now that have, have kind of seen um, you know kind of seen different situations. They've been a part of great wins. They've been a part of tough losses. There's growth that comes from all of it as long as you approach it and embrace it the right way. I think. Probably a really good example was was it was the other night after that game we had some things go on that I wasn't real pleased about and um, you know maybe when I was a younger coach I would have went into the locker room and, and been a little bit emotional but I, I sat back in the back room and kind of got my thoughts together and make sure that that we handle that the right way and the coaching staff was a big part of that too. Um, you know, so just just things like that. I think I don't think people realize sometimes how how fragile it all is, and um, you know how how you know how strategic you need to be um, with messages. And you know, every day you got an opportunity to get better, and you get an opportunity to, to to get worse. And you know, we've been we've been fortunate. There's been adversity that has hit, um, but I think the locker room has handled it well. I think the coaches have handled it well, and, and, and we keep growing. Um, I will say that's probably come with with you know age and experience as well. Um, you know, try not to overreact to things as much. Um, but but you know, we're just in a good place. You know, I think I think the coaches' relationships with the players is really strong, and vice versa. We're able to have tough conversations with guys. Um, we're able to hold guys accountable, and they don't like it, but they understand it. Um, so you know, we're we're in a good place. But, but it's, you know, you've never, you've never arrived because as I said to you guys before, you know, we're responsible for 120, 18 to 22 year old males. Uh, and there's always, there's always something going on. And that's academically, that's athletically, that's socially, that's, that's all of it. But we're just, we're just in a good place. But, but we can't ever take that for granted. We gotta keep working for it every single day. All right, we'll go to Jeff Hall.
Joe Giuliano, Philadelphia Inquirer. Hello, Dan. Hey, Joe. How are you, man? I'm good, thank you. And you? Good. I left Philly, I think it was on Thursday. I left here, went to Philly on Thursday morning and recruited. And it was nice, but I had like a, a long sleeve button down on and like a Penn State sweater vest. And then later in the day, I ended up in Jacksonville, Florida. I stepped off the plane, it was 91 degrees. So it's hard to kind of prepare for both. Um, how, what's the weather like there now? Oh, it's uh, pretty gloomy, but it's going to be in the 60s, uh, low 60s. Today? But, uh, yeah, but it's going to get cold on the weekend, just like in the uh, Wow. Wow. Thanks for the weather update. <laughs> hey, hey, no problem. Uh, you mentioned in your opening remarks about Minnesota suffocating offense because they've had time of possession and third down conversions. And obviously, your defense is going to have to get off the field uh, against them on Saturday. But what is the role of your offense uh, on Saturday? And just keeping the ball away from them, maybe sustaining some drives uh, uh, during the day. Yeah, I, I think the worst thing that you can do is go into a game like this and try to change your identity and be something that you're not. So we're, we're not we're not changing you know anything. Um, obviously, we always want to you know be efficient on offense and, and convert on third downs and stay on the field. Obviously, our defense uh, wants to get off the field. You know, I think a lot of times it's funny when you talk about time of possession. Everybody talks about the offense, especially when you're running a spread, no huddle style offense, but it's both. It's, the defense has a responsibility to get off the field with turnovers and three and outs, and the offense has, has responsibility to stay on the field and convert, um, because obviously this is the style they want to play, and, and part of our responsibility is try to get them out um, of the style that they want to play and make the make the game um, you know, go in a way that they're not used to playing. That's, that's challenging. It's obviously very challenging to do on the road as well, and it's challenging to do against an uh, opponent that's you know, had as much success as they've had, and, and they're confident right now. So you know, that's, that's, going to be, that's going to be a tremendous challenge, there's no doubt about it. Mike Gross, Lancaster Newspapers. Good afternoon, James. Hey, Mike. Um, the last time that you guys uh, Came on the bye and played a road game, which of course is Maryland. I, I thought your overall life in that game from beginning to end, at all phases, was about as good as it could get. So I'm wondering if, you, if there's anything about handling the bye that fed into that, uh, and anything that you maybe learned about that going forward that would be useful. Well, I think for us, you know, for nine years now that I've been doing this, that we, we've tried to refine our process. And our process has not changed a whole lot in nine years, but, but we are refining it and we're tweaking it and finding ways that we can get better. And that's from a coaching perspective, that's from a scheme perspective, that's a fundamental technique perspective, uh, that's from a sports science perspective. Um, that's all of it. That's nutrition. You know, all those little wins add up. How our guys sleep, uh, that, that adds up for us. Um, how our guys eat, the quality of food, the type of food they're getting, those, those things add up for us. Um, the information that I'm able to get from the sports scientists in terms of where our team is and, and when we need to practice harder, when do we need to condition more, when do we need to cut back, all those things are values. Our process really has not changed a whole lot uh, in nine years, but it, but, it, but it has been tweaked, it has been refined, and I think um, you know, we've, we've gotten better. You know, we've gotten better in how we practice, we've gotten better in how we prepare, we've gotten better in how we handle a normal game week, we've gotten better in how we handle a Friday night game through experience and, and trials. Uh, we've gotten better in how we, you know, handle bye weeks and then how we come off of the bye week. It's, it's all of it. And what I try to do is I got a great staff of coaches and, and trainers and, and doctors and our academic people and, like I said, the sports scientists and nutritionists, all these different people. And what I'm trying to do is get as much information as I possibly can get from them and our players. Um, and then in the off season, some discussions with some other coaches and other programs. And, and come up with the best plan for Penn State. And I think we've, we've been able to do that. So you know, we got to go do it again against a really good opponent 
on the road in this conference, which which isn't which isn't easy to do. And um, but I do think the experience that we had of playing a ranked Michigan team at home, there's value in that. Uh, going on the road and playing Iowa at night, Kinnick Stadium, and that stadium has been been a nightmare uh, at night for a lot of people, and we found ways to, to win there. So. Um, not, not that necessarily those those wins um, do anything specifically for us against against Minnesota, but there there is some confidence that comes from that. Um, I've never been there, haven't been to the stadium, haven't been to this venue, so trying to get as much information as we can on what to expect. What's the wind like in the stadium? Because the wind is different at all these different stadiums. What's the temperature going to be like? What's the locker room going to be like? Just so we can plan and be as prepared and. The fact that we haven't been there before, some of those things, some of those things are a little bit, a bit new to us. So, um, so looking forward to the opportunity. It should be great. Um, you know, should be a great. You know, I would think it's going to be a great environment. I think it's going to be great for for our conference. I think it's going to be great for college football. I love the fact that the game is at 12 o'clock. That should be great too. Um, so, looking forward. To it. Corey Geiger, Elton Amir. Hi, James. How are you? Good. How are you, Kurt? Good, James. Um, your name occasionally comes up when the media starts talking about jobs around the country. I'm just curious if that bothers you at all, stuff like that. It's kind of thrown out there during the season. And do you ever feel the need to talk about that some of your players? Does, does everybody just try to ignore it? As you know, we, we work very, very, very hard and staying focused on the task at hand. That's, that's with everybody. Uh, whenever anything comes up, we try to address it, um, make sure everybody kind of understands where we're at um, with everything, with coaches, with players, with recruits, with, with all of it. Um, but we try to stay as focused as we possibly can on the task at hand. All those things, um, all those things that take away from that, you know, we, we try to stay away from as, as much as we possibly can. Um, I, I've, I've also heard PJ's name mentioned for a bunch, so you guys could spend a lot of time calling him and talking to him about it in their program. Um, but we love it here. I uh, really enjoy coaching these guys and, and don't really see that, that changing anytime soon. But um, you know, looking forward to playing Minnesota. We'll open up to questions here in the room. Rachel. I would love for all you guys to call, though. Call, call them all week long. I got a number. I'll give it to you. Hey, James, how are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. This seems to be about as stable as your offensive line has been at this point of the season. Uh, how important has that been to your offensive success, and how important is it moving forward to what you guys need to do? Yeah, I, th I think it's. I think your point is a good one. I think you know we we have been you know able to be stable and, and consistent. Uh, with the guys that are playing, I do think you know being able to get you know, Des some significant uh, time and experience, I think has been really valuable to us. I think uh, getting both uh, Mike Miranda and and, um, uh, and CJ uh, Thorpe time, I think has been really important. I think both of them have played extremely well. I think all three of those guys have played extremely well. It's allowed us to build depth. It's allowed us to keep some of those other guys fresh as well. We do have some guys that um, have been, you know, played a lot of football for us, and that experience, especially at that position, is really valuable. You know, guys like Gonzo and Mennett and Fries um, are just are just doing awesome. You know, in terms of how they practice, in terms of how they play, how they communicate on the sideline uh, with our coaches, um, how they how they kind of set the tone and leadership with the younger players as well, and help them learn and and gain from their experience all of it has been all of it has been really good so uh, we're in a good place as you know when i when i got here uh, that was not the case we, we couldn't be in any further from that i think you know we had six or seven scholarship offensive linemen when we got here which is one of the most ridiculous things uh, i've ever been a part of to be honest with you um, so we're in, a, we're in a much better place but we got to keep building um, Look at the best programs in the United States. They're, they're really good on the offensive line, consistent. They're really good on the defensive line, consistent. And and you can't you can't really fall behind at those two positions because it's it's too hard to, to fix it. It takes time to fix it. So 
uh, we got we got to keep building. But, but you know, the fact that not a whole lot of people are talking about the O line, and I don't get a whole lot of questions about it, is a, is a good thing. James, you guys have a lot of success in the red zone this year, and you're facing a defense this week that has struggled to stop teams in the red zone. Against on the road, how important is that going to be for you guys as an offense to keep up that success in the red zone? Yeah, obviously we got to get there as many times as possible. You know, we got to get into the red zone as many times as we possibly can. It's, it's been an emphasis for us. We've been good at it. I think it's a combination that we're able to run the ball and throw the ball. I think the best teams in the red zone are able to, to do both. Obviously, that translates when you get down there. Um, but yeah, I think literally every aspect is going to be important. Going on the road and uh, kicking field goals, um, you know, obviously, is, is good and important. But you know, being able to go on the road and score touchdowns in the red zone is, is critical. Um, you know, it's hard to get down there, so when you get down there, you got to you got to make the most of it. You know, so um, you know, that that'll be a storyline in the game, no doubt. James, uh, you complimented Minnesota's offensive line a little bit earlier, so I'm curious with PJ Mustafer, and how does he match up against a you know kind of a tough lineup like that? And where do you kind of see his ceiling as the snap counts? As you said the other week, you know he, he should probably see some more time, obviously. Yeah, I, I think you'll see probably um, CJ and and um, Rob probably get between 15, you know, more reps a game could be could be 20. Probably 15 more reps in this game. Um, you know, we think that they can handle that. You know, we do. And then obviously you'll, you'll see a little bit more Fred and a little bit more Judge and you know some of the other guys too. So um, that's going to be a big storyline for this game. You know, uh, I don't think we've seen an O line like this this year. But I'd also make the argument I don't know if they've seen a D line you know like us before either. So that, that's going to be an important battle. Going, going into the game, there's no doubt about that. Hey James, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, thank you. Uh, question about Tyler Johnson. When, when you, uh, everyone's looking for speed at the receiver position, most likely. But when you have a guy like that who is as physical at the catch point, what sort of stresses does that put on the defensive back in a situation like that? And how have your uh, defenders done against players like that in the past? Because you've faced a couple of a similar profile in the past. Yeah, I think, you know, it's interesting you say that because you look at really all their offensive uh, skill players and specific at the wide receiver position, they're big guys. Um, you know, none of them are really small. You look at, you know, you talk 6'2", 205, 6'2", 210. Um, they're big, they're physical. Same thing in the tight end position, same thing across the offensive line. You know, they're built like, I think, you know, how people think of, of Big Ten offenses. Uh, obviously, uh, John Reed is not the biggest corner, but he's big enough, uh, and he's crafty. Um, you know, and he understands the game, and he understands body position, and all those types of things. So, um, that's going to be a challenge. You know, it's going to be a challenge with Castro and John and our young corners going against big physical receivers that are playing at a very high level and, and playing confident. The quarterback's extremely accurate. He puts the ball in positions for those guys to be able to go make plays. Once again, um, I think this is the best wide receivers that we have faced this year. But I'd also make the argument, I don't know if they've seen defensive backs or pass, or pass rush like, like we've been. So, um, you know, especially with the RPO stuff that they do, um, the skinny posts or slant on the backside of their reads, um, he throws it extremely well. Uh, they put people in conflict and then you know, their receivers do a really good job of not only catching the ball, but then run after the catch. So um, it's going to be a challenge. There's, there's no doubt about it. Hey, James. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. Um, I just want to ask about the bye week. Uh, do you get more family time than usual you know, during the week off? And how important is it for you to use that time to you know, spend more with your family if you can? Yeah, I wish. Um, you know, Probably the biggest change for us is the mornings. Um, we, we come in late to allow coaches to take their kids to school and things like that. Um, but but not really. Uh, you get the morning a little bit, um, and then um, you know some of the coaches weren't on the road on Saturday, so they were able to have Saturday um, with with their families. Um, but but I was on the road, and, and some of the other coaches were on the road, so not not as much time as you would think. It's it's funny how many times people text me, family or friends text me, and say, Hey, what are you doing for your off week? Like you know. 
um, but it's it's not really like that, you know, for us. Hey, James. Good morning. In addition to speed and depth, and maybe that's it. What um, has made the defense so good this year? Speed and depth. Um, good answer. Yeah, I, I think that I think the speed and depth obviously has been a, a big part of it. But I also think that last year, you know, we played a bunch of young players that you know this year are so much more experienced and, and so much more confident. I mean, PJ Mustafer playing as a true freshman, I thought he did some really good things. But now playing as a true sophomore, it, it's a it's a completely different scenario. Obviously, Michael Parsons, although. Although he played a lot of football for us last year, he was still a first-time linebacker. He was still, you know, um, you know, a first-time you know, guy playing significant time. Both of those guys now have worked in starting starting roles, um, and the confidence and the experience that, that comes with that, um, you know, it's it's really all of it. It's, it's you know, um, it's John Dotson. It's it's it's. All those guys in, in year two, the experience that they that they've gained. Um, I also just think you know um, our coaches have, have gotten better. Uh, they get better every single year. I think um, Brent's ability to work with his staff, as well as uh, Tim's experience as a coordinator. I think they complement each other very well. Um, I think we do a really good job of in the off season of saying, okay, this is how we played last year, and this was a strength and. And this was good to us, but based on our personnel and experience, um, how is the story of the you know Penn State defense for this season? Uh, how is it going to be maybe a little different? And you know, stylistically, are we going to play a little bit different? Um, what does our personnel lend us to be? Um, and, I, and I think we've done a good job of that. And I, so I think it's a it's a combination of all. And I think our offense playing more 12 personnel, which was something that was very important to me two years ago uh, when Ricky, Ricky took over um, to play more 12 personnel. I think has helped our offense, but probably more importantly is, is program-wise. Um, I think it, it's helped our offense on third down. It's helped our offense, obviously, in four-minute short yardage situations. Our personnel has, has been a big part of that. We want to be you know, great at the tight end position, and if you are great at the tight end position, you better have multiple of those guys on the field at the same time. But the other thing is, it allows our defense to be more prepared for the regular season when it comes, because if you're only seeing spread, if you're only seeing 10 personnel, if you're only seeing 11 personnel, and that's all you ever see, and then you got to get prepared uh, for a team like this that's going to line up in heavy sets or 12 personnel or whatever it may be, you've never seen it uh, from a talented offense um, you know, on your own team, it's hard to get ready for that in a week. So um, I, just think, I just think all those things really help. Kind of goes back to kind of how we were at Vanderbilt, to be honest with you. We we're more, more multiple. We're able to do a lot of different things on Saturdays from an offensive perspective. And again, more importantly, we're able to do a lot of these things that our defense is going to go against. They see it now during spring ball. They see it now during, during um, training camp. And then they see it in a limited amount against each other in practice. Because in a, even in a normal game, we, we, we always go against each other for at least you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, so I think there's tremendous value in that. Hey, James. Hey, I have to cough, apparently, every time I ask you a question. Um, I don't think anybody doubts the, the quality of the coverage guys that you have. It seems like a couple of the chunk plays you've given up guys have been in position but have never really turned around to make a play on that ball. Is that just me being dumb and not knowing what I'm talking about, or is there some truth to that? How do you kind of evaluate how some of those chunk plays have unfolded in those single coverage situations? No, you're, you're smart, very smart. You know that. Um, but I, I think the word never is a, is a, is a strong word. I, I, would, I wouldn't say that. I think we've made a bunch of plays. Um, but you're, you're exactly right. Those 50-50 those balls, um, you know, you kind of brought it up as well. Those 50-50 balls against his big, strong wide receivers, it's going to be important that there are more 60-40 balls, you know, in our way, whether we come down with it or, or, um, or make sure that they don't. But part of it is is getting them off balance. 
They haven't really been off balance very much. They're in manageable third down situations. They're usually playing with a lead, so they're doing very little drop back passes. When, when I say that to answer this question, because if they're running the ball effectively and staying on schedule and able to mix in a RPO throw or a max protect shot down the field, where the quarterback isn't under pressure, he's comfortable in the pocket, and now they're able to create conflict with a play action or RPO that eliminates maybe the underneath coverage or your safeties from being able to help over the top, and now your receivers are truly one-on-one, -on -one, that's hard to stop. You know, that's, that's, that's hard to stop. And us, us keeping them uh, off schedule as much as we possibly can, I think, is going to help everybody. Um, that's not how they want the game to go. So I think your point is a good one. But I think if you look, you look at the NFL, you, know, you look at that game last night, you look in, in, in major college football, um, that's a tough job. I, I'd say the best athletes on the field, all the players will get mad, I'll, I'll be fighting with them all in the team meeting by saying this, but I think the best athletes on the field are the corners. Why? Because there, there are times by scheme, there are times um, um, by people putting people in conflict, and the type of people that they need to cover. That's as tough of a job as there is. Uh, they're having to cover probably the offense's best athlete, and they're trying to do it everything backwards. You know, so um, it's it's a tough job. That's why those guys have to have short memories and have to be extremely confident. Uh, but also, I think your your point is a good one to the to the you know the part where they better have ball skills. You know, uh, you know. The best, the best DBs I think you got are the guys that could legitimately play wide out for you. Because when the ball's in the air, they're very comfortable, they're very confident, and they think the ball is theirs. Castro is like that, John's like that, and, you know, um, Keaton was a high level high school um, wide receiver. Marquise may be the, the most like that. Marquise, I mean, there's there may not be anybody more confident than Marquise, and he thinks when the ball's in the air, it is his every time. Um, you know, Trent's doing a good job with that as well, so you know, that, that's an area we got to continue to build, but it's, it's, it's tough. It's a tough. It's a tough responsibility and task. How are you doing, James? Hey, great. How do you balance the need or desire for the program to promote uh, where you guys might end up in the college football playoff rankings tonight, either for fan excitement or recruiting or whatever, while also going back to what you said earlier about making sure the guys stay focused on the task at hand, don't really bother with any of that? Don't do it. I don't. I don't. I, I could be wrong, but I don't think we've ever done it, and 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 and, and will not. We are completely focused on Minnesota. Preseason rankings mean nothing. Middle of the season rankings mean nothing. At the end of the season, um, people Thank will you. count up kind of where we're at and where they have us and tell us where we're going to go and we'll be excited about going there. Um, but we are completely focused on Minnesota and trying our best to be one and oh come Saturday afternoon, come Saturday night against a really good team, ranked team, undefeated team on the road um, that, that plays winning football. And all that other stuff. I, I don't think we need to create excitement. I mean, you know, we, we have some excitement. I go walking around campus, there's, there's excitement. Um, we, don't, we don't fill up a 107,000 seat stadium um, you know, without without excitement and without as good of support as there is in the country. So the, the best thing that we can do is focus on the task at hand and be the best versions of ourselves and, and dominate today. We're gonna to go out and have the best meetings we've ever had. We're gonna have the best practice we've ever had. I'm gonna I'm gonna lead the way the team needs me to lead. I'm, I'm gonna have energy, the coaches will have energy, we'll maximize the meetings, all of it. That's that's what I believe, um, 
and have believed this for, for a very long time. And Chris told me some of the guys um, in the press conference today or in the phone calls, Rashid Walker, Chris said it was awesome. You know, got some, some asked questions and got asked some questions about the stretch and this and that. And, and, and Rashid, you know, Rashid kind of understands how we go about our business and our process. And I think our guys, more importantly, they're not just saying it because that's how we answer questions. They're, they're, they believe in it. You know, they, they know if, if we spend our time focused on Penn State and preparation, that that preparation will lead to confidence. And that confidence will lead to us being able to go out and execute on Saturday at a higher rate than, than Minnesota executes. And that, that's all it's about. It's about preparation leading to confidence and confidence leading to execution. And the team that executes more on Saturday will win. That's it. James, go off of Greg's question. Uh, How are you doing? Good. Um, at what point did you feel like... Roadmaps? Not today, unless you want me to. That's, that's two weeks in a row. It might be she three. Can be huh? She can be tough. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, go on Greg's question about... Not just that spike she wants to I know, I kind of want to know. Uh, at what point did you feel like the team, the program, bought into the 1-0 and thing? Because I know you talked so much when you got here about breaking down walls and getting buy-in, because I don't think, and I could be wrong, but I don't think that happened overnight. No, it, it didn't. It didn't happen overnight. I, I think I've said this before. As young people, I think a lot of times you think there's only one way to do things. And in, in my 48 years, I, I've realized there's a lot of ways to be successful. It's a lot of different styles from a leadership standpoint. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get it done. This is the way that we choose to do it because it aligns with with my personality and my leadership style, and and we try to ingrain it into the coach, into the players. Um, as well, and I, you know, I think obviously it's also you know, we can't lose sight of the fact that the things that we're trying to teach in football they really should and better align with things that are going to allow these guys to go on to be successful in life. That's really why we're supposed to be doing this. Uh, I think sometimes as fans and, 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 and media, and sometimes as coaches, we lose sight of that. Um, so that's that's important. Um, but, I, but I think probably you know. Um, Early on in that, um, early on in that, you know, that we won the Big Ten championship. I think it started to be kind of ingrained in, in who we were, um, and is 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 kind of grown from there. I think um, you know, this off season, I think it's it's helped as well. Um, the reality is, is is you can have these philosophies all of all you want, but you better live them, and you better ingrain them, and then you also better be willing to change. The, the, the guys that we're coaching now in the locker room are very different than the guys when I first got here, very different than the guys at Vanderbilt, very different than the guys when I first got into this profession. Our society has changed. The guys have changed and how you motivate and how you educate um, is, is important. So, um, you know, I, I, think, I think we're in a good place. I don't think guys are reciting things. Uh, I think I, I mentioned you guys early on that I thought we were Memorizing the core values, we weren't really living them. I think I think we're doing that. Um, I think you know maybe early on guys were were you know, saying one and zero, oh, but not really you know, living it and believing it. And I think our guys are now. You know, I mean, the, the reality is you only have so much energy to spread around. So you know, our belief is you if you can if you can focus all your energy on the task at hand. Um, you're going to be the most successful doing it, and a lot of the other things are outside of your control anyway. So, so why would you why would you even do it? You're just going to frustrate yourself, and you're just going to spend energy on things that won't help. So, that's that's what we try to do. The world is complex enough. The um, you know the university and the classes and the challenges are complex enough. Their families and home lives are complex enough. We want to we want to try to make it. Is is uh, as focused and as clean and as um, efficient as we possibly can. And you know, we have found that this is this is a very useful tool of doing that. Time for two more, sir. Hey, Jay, Go ahead. Good. I'm good. Hey, um, going back to 2016, last time you guys played, you were two and two. You know, the program was kind of you, you, you were struggling a little bit. Since that, you, you got a hard hard fought win in overtime. 
since that game, you guys are 37 and seven, I think, if my math is right. Um, talk about the trajectory that that win would set your program on. Yeah, there's you know been a lot of things um, you think about you know, from that time. We're talking about you know being two and two. You're talking about how the stadium was. Um, I, I remember very clearly how the stadium was and how uh, the stadium was with me and how the stadium was with the team. I, I remember that very clearly. I probably always will. Um, you talk about the record since then. I think if if you if you look at if you look at from that game and from that year moving forward, if you look at um, the coaches that have been doing it since then, there's very few that have won you know, more games than we have as a program since that point. You know, we're we're part of a pretty good company now. There's coaches, um, you know, obviously Ryan Day doing a great job at Ohio State. You look at you know coach at Oklahoma. Um, is, is doing a phenomenal job, but, but the coaches that have been doing it since 2016 and the programs that have been in place, uh, there's very few people, you know, so I'm very proud of that. And, and I know how much hard work went into that from our players, from our staff, from the administration, uh, from President Barron, from the board, um, taking some really hard looks at ourselves and saying, where do we need to get better? Me doing the same thing. Uh, all of us, there's been a lot of hard work, blood, sweat, and tears poured into it. So, so I'm very proud of it. And I think whenever you can, you can point out some things and have some conversations with people that illustrate, um, you know, some of the success and some of the adversity that you've been able to overcome, I think is, is important. Um, you know, to be honest, I don't know if there's a, if it's talked about enough in my opinion to think about how far we've come um, in the last eight years, it's remarkable. It, it, to me, it's, it's, not, it's not talked about enough. Um, so I'm, I'm very proud of it. It's interesting is, is we, we went out and did some trips this summer and visited some people, and even our own people. You, you kind of sit down and you say, you know, bullet point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of what we've been able to do in the last six years or what we've been able to do specifically in the last three years. And people are like, I wouldn't have known that if, it, if you didn't tell me. Um, so we probably could do a little bit better job of that. You know, um, you know we, we got a pretty amazing story that we should be very proud of. But again, all that stuff's wonderful. We better go one and know Saturday.